two years ago, I started a life of full-time travel. With my boyfriend Bobby, we emptied out our old apartment and made our life fit in a tiny bag while we traveled around the world. But now everything's about to change. And to understand why we're moving to Paris, I first want to tell you the story of how I realized my dream to travel full-time. Full-time travel always was a big dream for me. I even met my boyfriend Bobby through a travel community seven years ago, and we worked really hard to be able to work online from anywhere in the world. We slowly increased how much we traveled until we were finally ready to do it full-time two years ago. And being someone who has always been super curious about the world and other cultures, I was so happy to finally get to realize my dream. So at this time, we really had a fully nomadic life. No apartment, no staff, only a tiny carry-on bag with a strict minimum. And I absolutely loved it, at least for a while. And the first few months were pretty crazy. We just bounced from country to country, just following what seemed cool right in the moment. This is how we went, for example, from Zimbabwe to Romania and spent a lot of time trying new things like really cool trains around the world, cruises, and a bunch of different cool accommodations. But after a while, I really started to want to spend more time in the places, really feel what the culture was about and feel immersed in it. So this is when we started spending a few months at a time in places. Living in places is just my favorite thing about travel, but it's also the thing that ruined it for me. And I'll explain that to you in a bit. So we started with living in Mexico for a few months since we both wanted to speak Spanish every day and we absolutely loved it there. We then went to live in Finland during winter and as a southern girl, it was the most unique and eye-opening experience ever. And I can now confidently say that I am not scared of the cold anymore. After that, we spent the spring in Italy, which is a country we both know super well and have been to so many times. And obviously the food there is next level, so it was definitely a great place for us. Then we spent around a month in Japan and Korea to film some videos there. And you've probably seen them on the channel recently. All of this was truly one of the coolest times of my life. But I want to tell you why I can't keep doing this anymore. So when you stay somewhere for a month, you start having your habits, the places you usually go to. You also meet a few cool friends and people you love. And you start to really feel almost like a local, like you actually live there. But obviously you don't. And a few months after you have to pack your stuff and move on to the next destination. And for me, that's what made me want to go back to living in one place and one place only. You see, it was becoming hard for me to move around and to move on to the next destination because I kind of grew attached to some of the places I discovered. And I found myself coming back to the places I love the most around the globe, which you've seen on the channel. And moving to these places definitely could have been an option, but unfortunately there were too many barriers to entry. Obviously there's the language, but you can learn it. But also there's the fact that it's really hard getting a visa to places when you're self-employed. You can usually get a one or two year visa, but then it's over and you have to go back home. So for me, this feeling of not being able to see myself long-term in one place kind of started to take a toll on my personal well-being. Like I wanted to have a place to come back to with a community and a home. At this point, we had some kind of big emergency meeting with Bobby and decided that, you know, we had to act now and find our home. You know, we had two choices in front of us, either coming back to live in New York or moving to France where I'm from. So we spent the summer in New York to see if it will be possible for us to move back there. And we talked to an attorney about visas and what we gathered here is that it will be pretty complicated and lengthy to have a visa as a self-employed person in the US and that it will take around a year or two and costs a lot of money, obviously. But we found out that bringing Bobby to France was way easier in terms of visa and paperwork and that it will be a cool opportunity for Bobby to learn a bit more about my culture and finish learning French. So with that in mind, we decided to start the process of moving to Paris. But before I tell you all about how that went, I want to kind of answer the main question you probably have after watching this. Is this the end of travel for us? So the answer is obviously no. I love to travel. It's a big part of me. I just want to have a cozy place to come back to to edit my videos. In any case, we'll be spending a lot of time in Europe where I'm from and in the US where Bobby's from and really dive deeper in our two cultures. And I think this will be reflected as well in the content I make for the channel because I really want to share my personal perspective as someone who is in between the US and Europe with you. And in general, I think I'll be traveling at a much slower pace. First, I want to focus more deeply on the places I already love and take my time to enjoy them. Like for example, I absolutely love coming back to Japan and I'd love to discover smaller cities and 
and the countryside and I haven't had the opportunity to do that yet. And I also think I will obviously keep visiting new places, but I absolutely do not want to have a country goal like visiting a hundred countries. And you know, nothing wrong with that, but I've already visited around 60 countries and lived in eight of them. And I don't want the places to visit to just be a number on a list or a box to tick. I want to really take my time to experience the culture and the local life because that's what drew me to travel in the first place. For example, when I travel, let's say to Vietnam, I care more about sitting down with the local and having a good meal and a chat about our perspectives on life than having a super packed day with a bunch of activities. And remember that the reality of being a content creator is that you still need to spend a lot of time seated at your computer producing and editing videos. So I actually only spend like a third of my time exploring new places. So that's also one of the big reasons why I wanted to have a home. Okay, so now all about the actual process of concretely moving to France. So if you're interested, if you want a full tutorial on how to move to Paris, not that hard. You know, being a French person who has lived for a long time abroad, I have a bunch of tips that cannot be found anywhere else on YouTube. So let me know if that's interesting to you and I'll make a tutorial. So all in all, the whole apartment hunting process took us around two to three weeks from the moment we made the decision to actually being fully moved in. First, we had to gather a bunch of administrative documents. And this part actually took us quite a while because France is a very administrative country. So it's not like in the US where to sign a lease, you just have to show that you can pay. Here we had to make a full 34 pages PDF document showing all our tax returns, work contracts, and that type of fun stuff. Then we planned some visits and in Paris apartments go super fast so you have to really be on top of things. And Bobby really took that to the next level because he sent around 400 messages to any apartment that might potentially be cool. And one thing to know about Parisian apartments is that these beautiful buildings they are in are super old. They were built in the 19th century and have not been renovated a lot since. So most of the apartments you can find will not really be the ones your Paris dreams are made of. Like you'll often have creaky floors, leaky plumbing, terrible soundproofing, and all that for a lot of money. So you really want to be selective to make sure you get your money's worth. And our budget was around $2,000 in total. And for that price, we're trying to get at least two bedrooms and a fully furnished apartment. You know, unsurprisingly, rents in Paris are so expensive. So not all apartments we were writing to actually had two bedrooms. So we visited a few one bedrooms that were around 18 to 1900, which were pretty nice, but we knew we could do better. After we visited this apartment that was right in the city center of Paris, you cannot be more central than that. And it had one bedroom and a tinier room that was an office that could also be turned into a second bedroom. This one was pretty cool and it had a really cute view of our walking street. But then when we visited our apartment, we knew it was the one. It is super cute and homey. It's in a super cute neighborhood with a bunch of tiny food shops. And as of yesterday, we are fully moved in. Move-in day, October 21st, 2023. Happy move-in day! Cool. Happy moving day! And I'm super excited to give you a full tour of the apartment in the next video, coming up in a few days. So until then, thanks for watching this video until the end. I really appreciate it. Really means a lot to me, especially on more personal videos like this one. And I'll see you soon.